G'day, welcome back to Fatty Margins once again. Uh, as you all, most of you will know by now, I'm in the throes of uh, walking holiday preparation. Uh, and uh, I don't know about you guys, but uh, often when you, you plan a holiday, you find yourself, oh, I need to go buy a new map, I need to buy something, you get this or that, and you end up spending a few pennies um, sorting a few things out. Well, as you and as you all know, when I do go walking, whether it's on holiday or uh, around here, I always have a Swiss Army knife on my person. It's usually kept in the uh, the, the pouch that sits on the zip pocket on the, on the on the hip belt of the bag, uh, largely because um, because there is a hip belt on the bag, so you can't carry it on your on your belt underneath the hip belt. If that makes sense. So anyway, my uh, my usual fare is uh, has been the ranger um, or the uh, the huntsman, um, but quite often, and the huntsman will fit in my will, will ride in the pocket, okay, uh, but I reserve that place for uh, usually for a, some um, something more traditional. Um, can you be more traditional than a Victorian like Swiss Army knife? There's a question. Answers on a postcard. Um, no, so I, uh, but I usually carry the Swiss Army knife, as I say, in the pack, uh, and, and uh, a traditional folder in my pocket. And uh, it's often the Ranger, but more often than not, I find that what I end up putting in in that pocket is the old Swiss Champ, because you don't want to miss out. But what I find with the Swiss Champ is it's just so. What's going on there? It's just so confoundedly enormous. Oh, there we are. I had a blade clash. Uh, and it's quite heavy. And I had to think I had to think about this and I thought, well, what do I use and what don't I use? Now, I never use a fish scaler. And even if I wanted to scale a fish, I wouldn't use a Victorinox uh, Swiss champ for that because you're going to get fish through the entire knife. It's going to be a, a hell of a mess. So I really, you know, uh, I understand why they put it on in the sauce. It's sort of comprehensive, but I don't really understand why they put it on because I certainly wouldn't scale a fish with with a, with a Victorinox. Well, not with one of those. And uh, so I want the file, and I want the, and I, and I want the saw. Uh, and I'm not really bothered about the Phillips screwdriver. Uh, I haven't had to mend a, a gate with a foot screwdriver yet. Uh, the magnifying glass, I, use, I only ever use that for kind of examining hangnails or something like that. The pliers, surprisingly, I find quite handy. So it's been a long time since I shelled out uh, currency for a Victorinox. Uh, but last night when I was on Amazon, I pressed the button and I have bought one that I've never had before because I've got Spartans and I've got campers, uh, climbers and campers uh, and huntsmans and I had an explorer which I think my son uses uh, and uh, rangers and the Swiss champ which I've had as I say for must be going on 20 years. So <clears throat> what, did I, what did I go with? Well I went with the handyman. You get most of the tools of the Swiss Champ, uh, but with a considerable saving in terms of weight and bulk. Um, basically, it's a Ranger that has a pair of pliers, uh, is what it comes to. Uh, and I thought, yeah, that's, uh, that's a nice solution. Now, before it'll be ready uh, for its trip out, because this is now going to be uh, dedicated walking knife it has to be um, tidied up and I thought you might like to hang around while I do it you can I, I was uh, I got this one on Amazon because it was the cheapest place to buy it but you can get them elsewhere and they have I think what they call ultra which I suspect means plus scales though I didn't find out now I don't want to dismantle my others so I've got I'm going in my box here with this black box I'll have a rummage around, see if I can find a plus scales. 
Well, they're basically plus cows are only um, it's only the one side. Oh my, do I have some scales. I've got uh, little uh, hanging clips, uh, more hanging clips, and springs for the scissors, toothpicks, and spare pins. I think that was pins, but I don't really know there's none of those left. Um, spare tweezers. There's a set of black scales. Are they plus scales? Yes, they are. So. Uh, I guess what we do is we take these off and we put these on. So let's have a look. All right, first step of the hip parade, remove those tools. Yeah, let's have a look. Sometimes they're not, they're not quite as tight fitting as you might think when you get them off. Other times, you have to resort to a bit of gentle persuasion. So, let's see. Tiny amount of the cellar door on that, but that's okay. You can look at that. And we need this one. Okay. That's the toothpick hole. And I suppose we better even it up and make it nice on both sides. no fuss as you can see it just pops off you won't do that for long though so it's something you can do five or six times you, know, you have to sort of make your mind up in my experience anyway and people say oh to dip them in hot water and that sort of thing I've tried that and I find that either I'm a bit slow or they um, these are a bit soft Anyway, yeah, no gaps. All nicely secured. Tweezers back where it belongs. Okay, so 
we've replaced the scale for plus scale. We've replaced the toothpick with um, Firefly. And I have to say these things are not, do not enthuse me. They're not very well made, frankly. They're a bit, they don't retain very well. And given how much they cost, they should be better than that. Okay, where do we get to? Oh, yes. So now we have to go, we need a pen. I've got a spare pen, so I'll just rub one out of my other knives. I find the pen really useful. There we go. So, Firefly pen tweezers. You, all you aficionados will have seen all that before. And then, because I have a, have one uh, ferrocerium rod on my person in the pocket, uh, and I've got one now in here, I shall forego the third one and just go with the uh, baby screwdriver so that somebody with better eyes than me can fix my glasses if they break. The pin I shan't bother with. And there we go, we're nearly there. Now we have to go out to the shed, guys, because we have to uh, sort this out and create a spark firing edge on there. So I'll bring you back in a sec. Okay, as you can see, it does throw a little bit of the spark, but nowhere near what we're looking for. So I'm going to use this bastard file and I'm going to set that down there. Previously I've used a, uh, a rasp um, and that worked okay, but this is kind of Take it away and test it for a second. All right, fellas, so I think that's final on that. We don't have to go mad. If it proves to be inadequate, I've always got the saw. But that's a neat, I think it's a very neat little trick. Uh, as you can see, it's throwing plenty of sparks, so we're, we're only going to be lighting alcohol or gas. So that's it. So I shall get a quick uh, quick dab of um, ballastol now, and then she's ready to go. The black scales, plus scales, spare ferroserum rod, two fire strikers, uh, and a pliers. Toron asks, um, handyman. Right. Well, I'm grateful for you all uh, popping by yet again. This is the third time in three days. And um, I shan't see you now until, until I get back. So I wish you all every blessing, health and happiness. And this is Steve, and I'm signing out for now. Bye-bye.